starting to uh, do the process of replacing the lock pump. First thing that you gotta move is this bad boy. That out of the way. You see all that water right there, Jeff? Look. Water pump right there. Looks like they put uh, silicone or something on there, whoever did it last. See the water pump? It's leaking right here. And it's leaking right here, and it's also leaking from the bearing. Take the cap this? off, yeah, to relieve the pressure. There it goes. There should be a hose on there. It's coming out. It's going to come out all should over. I move the here it comes. It's totally draining the radiator. See, see, I'm going to put the right Mopar antifreeze in here. So I'm going to flush it and get this old stuff out. Now there's still coolant in the block and hopefully that'll drain out when I take this off. First step off and then the bolts and then take this off. I think this locks on here. Let me see. Then you take the belt off, the belt tensioner, then all the bolts. You know what you can do? Go get me a plastic bag out of the house so I can cover my alternator with it. Or you can put a plastic bag here to save the, but I'm I'm not saving the cooler. I'm putting new cooler in here so it doesn't matter. I got a bucket underneath to catch it. I'm going to take that thing out. It's going to come pissing out. Well, I guess not. So there. It's a brand new 180. What's going to be real hard is getting that bottom hose off. I've watched videos on YouTube and everybody struggles with that. I'm drawing a picture of the pulleys and I'm going to draw a picture of how the belt goes so I know how to put it back on after I take out this old one. This is exactly how it goes. Now you need a 16 millimeter to take off the tension of the belt. Catch it right down here. There's a hole this fits in and you just and I use the pipe on your on your ratchet and you just pull it that way and the belt will come right off. I got a new belt I'm gonna put on after this one's in good shape and I got a new one just in case. It's bottom hose, gotta you can see it right there, you gotta pinch those two things together, pull it down. heater line right here you got to take this out and there's a uh, goes in right here there's an o-ring I got a new o-ring from the Mopar dealership then you have to take this off this is your temperature sensor is there a, there's not even a fucking o-ring on here they just shoved a bunch of sealant idler gear get me to loosen that while you have the water pump still tightened up because if you try to break it loose with the water pump off, it'll be virtually impossible. So loosen this one and loosen this one. And then when you get it on the table, you can just take them off, they're already broken loose. And take the idler off, it's right here. Set it over here, get it out of the way because there's a bolt or two that's behind it you gotta get to. Some bolts are long and some bolts are short. So what I do is I'm taking it out of the old pump. And I'm sticking it right in the hole that, and I'll transfer once I get the old pump sitting over here, I'll transfer those to the old pump. So I know where they go. I put the bolts in the new water pump so I know where they go back. Cause look at long, short, long, they're all different. You want to keep track of which one you took out. So when I get the old water pump, set it over here, I'll transfer those bolts to that. So then I can put the new one in. Hitting this. So yeah, I had to take a board, put it in here and hit it with this to get it to break loose. Because whoever put this on before used a bunch of gasket sealer. And it's pretty much like glue. And there you go. This bolt, to take it out, just makes it easier to get the water pump out. See all that gasket sealer they put on here? The bearing's not in bad shape. I think it was just leaking from all of these areas because they caked on this, this sealant stuff. 
do this, you transfer everything over. Go down, take it down the corner or something. When you take off the hose, you move this up here, pull the hose off. So put this over here and move it up here in this area. But when you put the hose on, you just got to bring it back down. Transfer the bolts over. I'm taking this pulley off and put it here. I'll take your razor blade, scrape off if there's any on your car. The guy who did this one before caked this on. Get some of this right here, made for a water pump. Just lay a bead along this track, and then I'll put this gasket on top of it. Here's the gas that comes with the water pump. Line it up to where it matches. Okay, now Jeff, I'm gonna go over, stick it up there, and then you, you hand me this bolt first, and then these two. I'm gonna take this bolt out right here. It makes it easier to put in. And you move, you get it underneath this, like this. Put all the bolts, put them in finger tight, and then uh, when you tighten them down, you have to zigzag. And show them over there. I'm using the old water pump to know where all my bolts go. Because they're all different sizes, so it makes it kind of a pain. Just finger tightening them for now, just so uh, I can get a ratchet on them. You want to smash the gasket evenly, or it will leak. Tightening it by hand. I'm gonna do the most difficult ones first. Zigzag pattern. Smash that gasket down real good. I'm not using a torque wrench. I'm using human wrench. Just go by feel. Put the new O-ring on this heater hose. Put a little bit of this stuff, same stuff I put on the gasket for this and just rub it around here. Take this bolt out. I tell you what size it is, but I really can't see it. There we go. I'm gonna check the very bottom one on the water pump just to make sure we got it. Just double checking these bottom ones because once everything's put on, bottom hose put on way down here, and uh, I'm gonna need the light. That, my friends, that hose is a pain in the ass. It took us, I don't know how long it took us, but we got it. This is gonna go on. There's a little hole that this has to go into right there in the, in the water pump. Make sure you line that up. Right like that. Just putting the thermostat neck on, 180 degrees. Always make sure you put the little burper th uh, thing on your thermostat up at the top. Then we'll show you how we're going to do a coolant flush, coolant change, and then um, we'll burp the system. All right. So there's that. Um, next thing I'll do, I'm going to put the belt on. But that'll be the next day. 
the next day. Welcome back to the channel. Today's another day. I worked 24 seven, so I had to take a break, get back to work, but we're back at it. This is the diagram I drew, so I can remember how to put the belt back on. Just set it right here, and we'll do it that right there. It's pretty complicated, I try to remember. I couldn't get a good picture, so I just drew a map. All right, now you put this back on. As soon as I get done with that, I'm gonna fill it up with this right here. Distilled water only. You wanna use distilled because regular water will rust the block. Actually, pull that bucket out for me, Jeff. This is your bleeder port. You wanna take this out when you're filling it up and as soon as coolant or water comes out of here, you know you're full. This is also where you bleed it from, but we'll do that later after we flush it out. So the thermostat will open up and take what's in here. Then I will shut it off and drain it. And do it again with the right thing. one of those a full one Jeff I went and got Mopar coolant and you do a gallon of this with a gallon of distilled you mix them because it doesn't come pre-mixed so I'm taking a gallon of that and a gallon of this mix them together oh my god I hope it doesn't fill this up perfect something I can hear it coming out yeah it sounds like it yeah there it is okay let's put that thing in real quick this shit though when the thermostat opens that shit go way down I can hear the AC clicking on it all the time something's not right there Check engine light came on after changing my water pump. Okay, it's done. Come on, plug it, Jeff. So I went into AutoZone. They, they checked my uh, check engine light and they said it's uh, engine coolant temperature circuit, high input. Uh, that's because I put a 180 thermostat in there. It's gonna come on, so I'm gonna go to my mechanic and I'm gonna have him clear it. And it should stay off. So the check engine light went off on its own after I went to AutoZone to find out what it was. Um, we're at the gas station and we're just checking the coolant. The coolant is fine, no leaks. We're good to go. Power runs. 